Hedge funds are typically only accessible by the ultra rich. Here we'll explore what hedge funds are and why you may or may not want to act like one. So what is a hedge fund? As the name suggests, a hedge fund is quite literally in its simplest explanation, a fund that holds different assets as hedges to each other in an attempt to preserve or enhance returns while lowering volatility and risk. This usually means these different assets are uncorrelated or negatively correlated, meaning they move up at different times. Hedge funds Funds are set up as limited partnerships that pool investment capital from wealthy individuals and then typically use advanced, complex trading strategies to actively manage a basket of esoteric assets. To invest in hedge funds, you have to be what's called an accredited investor, which just means you have a net worth greater than $1 million or an annual net income greater than $200,000. This allows hedge funds to use more aggressive strategies than would otherwise be allowed by the SEC, such as leverage, shorting, derivatives, and greater trading frequency. Examples of hedge fund investors are pension managers, insurance companies, and wealthy individuals or families. Hedge funds originally got their name from the idea of using a hedged bet, holding assets expected to move in opposite directions in order to reduce volatility and expected losses. Modern hedge funds, however, have expanded this definition and usually do not reflect the classic examples and ideas. There is no one single strategy among hedge funds, quite the opposite. Different hedge funds utilize very different strategies and trade very different assets. Some some may trade stocks and bonds, others may only trade options and futures contracts, some may take a global macro approach, others may choose to follow short-term trends and events. Hedge funds have designated periods during which you can buy in or withdraw. As such, they are highly illiquid. Your money may be locked up for months or years. Again, this allows managers to be aggressive with capital without worrying about liquidity needs. There are over 16,000 hedge funds in existence as of 2020. It's important to read the prospectus and understand the strategy strategy, fees, and risks of the hedge fund you're considering. So you're not an accredited investor and you can't invest in a hedge fund. Should you try to use assets available to you to invest like a hedge fund does? Probably not. The allure of hedge funds to the average retail investor makes sense. Hedge funds seem exotic due to their inherent exclusivity and relative mystery, but that fact alone obviously should not be a reason to invest in them. An important but oft forgotten point is that while some hedge funds make headlines seeking and delivering outsized market returns, likely for only a short period of time, many modern hedge funds simply aim to preserve the capital of their wealthy investors. That is, they are more concerned with maintaining a slow and steady return in any market market environment than with generating above market returns. They do so by shaping their strategy around mitigating volatility and risk. If you're watching this, odds are your goal is to exceed or match the market return in order to fund greater spending or to expedite the road to retirement, not simply to optimize the portfolio with the goal of minimizing volatility. On average, the strategies and assets used to invest like a hedge fund are more suitable for the retiree who is more concerned with preserving their wealth at that point. But to briefly address this allure of potential market outperformance, remember alpha, excess risk-adjusted return, is a zero-sum game and a finite resource. For every trade, there's someone on the other side of it who also thinks they're right. The average of all investor returns must necessarily converge to the market return. And as I've explained elsewhere, most managers underperform the market, which is why we're indexing in the first place. For hedge funds that do aim to and succeed in beating the market, we also know that many times their market outperformance can be attributed to excess exposure to known risk factors, not manager skill. But even if your goal is to simply minimize volatility and risk, retail investors can do this already through diversification with highly liquid low-cost index funds. Even more advanced funds like SPD offer the seemingly elusive derivatives-based crash protection tactics for the retail investor at a cost much lower than that of a hedge fund. So we know most investors probably shouldn't aim to invest like a hedge fund, but do hedge funds per se or strategies that mimic one deserve any allocation in already diversified portfolios for a potential diversification benefit? The evidence suggests the answer is no. Hedge funds themselves do tend to have returns that are lowly correlated to the broad stock market. That's the first thing we look for in considering assets to add to the portfolio. The first problem is that this low correlation is born of an inherent returns distribution that does not resemble that of the market. Specifically, hedge funds and strategies that mimic them present excess 
tail risk, or higher probability of extreme outcomes not seen with more traditional assets, due to the necessary concentration on which their trading thesis rests. The second and more important problem is that this low correlation tends to skyrocket at precisely the wrong time, during market crashes. If this sounds familiar, it's the same case I made for why corporate bonds deserve no place in diversified investment portfolios, in my opinion. In fact, the relative decrease in liquidity and widening of credit spreads in market crashes are two specific factors that hurt both hedge funds and corporate bonds during times of crisis in financial markets. If you do still want to invest like a hedge fund just for the heck of it, I'll have a new video soon covering several hedge fund ETFs, so be sure to like and subscribe. In the meantime, I mentioned earlier that the famous all-weather portfolio is an example of using multiple uncorrelated assets to reduce volatility and risk, so click here to watch my video on it.